on Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys something that they were, nobody else is going to show you guys on YouTube. It's actually how to make the most nutritious watermelon juice ever. And actually, it's not even with a juicer. It is with a vacuum blender. Very important. you got to underline the vacuum like three times. you got to use a vacuum blender. Don't do this in a traditional blender because you'll probably be making the worst or lowest nutrition watermelon juice out there. So this is what's called a vacuum blender. And you're thinking, John, that looks like a standard Blendtec blender. Well, yes, you're right. It is a standard Blendtec blender. And then all you got to do if you're lucky enough to own the Blendtec blender is buy this little lid. This lid takes the place of the standard Blendtec lid, and this incorporates dual vacuum pumps, so it literally sucks the excess oxygen out of the craft before blending. In published studies, it shows that when you blend using under vacuum, a good vacuum blender could remove 80 to 85 percent of the oxygen that's in the craft, so that's leaving very little oxygen left to react with the oxygen sensitive vitamins and other plant phytonutrients that can significantly lower them. The other thing I will say is when you do what's called vacuum juicing, because we're just not making a smoothie, we're going to do vacuum juicing. So that involves blending it first, step one, and step number two, you need to strain it out. So what we're going to use is we're going to use these things. They're called Alexa's bags. These are the world's best nut milk and juice bags that are uh, welded in the United States, have a full one-year replacement warranty, are BPA uh, safe certified, also have rounded corners and no drawstrings, so there's no channels for pulp to get stuck. They're really easy to clean. They're going to last you guys a long time. They're not like a standard nut milk bag that could be a pain to clean and also often break because nut milk bags are not really made for heavy-duty juicing use. In addition, Alexa's bag is oversized, as you guys will see in a little bit, so you could easily fit it over a big two-quart Anchor Hawking glass collection measuring cup, and that's how I end up juicing. And, you know, here's the thing, guys. I'll be straightforward. I'm like the first guy on YouTube to teach you guys about vacuum blending, although I wasn't the first to invent it, actually. I only learned about it myself from a guy named Tom Dip Dixon, who made the Will It Blend series on YouTube. He got really famous, right? He was unfortunately ousted from the Blend Tech company, the company he started. And he invited me up to his shop when he did own the Blend Tech company. And he introduced me to vacuum juicing because I'd never heard about it before. And when I vacuum juiced for the first time, and I actually I did celery and I brought a slow juicer and I used his uh, vacuum blender to do vacuum juicing with his uh, with this very bag actually um, and it made a better tasting juice higher yield juice and I mean I could taste the nutrients in there and trust me I've been drinking juice now for 29 years and of course I just don't take what I believe into it I look up the science and that's what we're going to cover in a little bit that being said I know some of you guys are thinking John I can't vacuum blend because I don't have a blend tech blender I can't get that lid well those of you guys that have Vitamixes are in luck you could also get the Void Systems lid with a carafe that will fit all classic or legacy model Vitamixes. It will not fit the new Ascent model that has the self-detect smart chip in there, or I like to call it a dumb chip. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys are covered. If you guys don't own any one of these and can't upgrade your current blender, then check the link down below where I go over all the major brand popular vacuum blenders on the market and I share the pros and cons of each one so that you can learn which is the best one for you. Also, I'll put a link down below to the unboxing video where I unbox the Void Systems lid, use it on the Blendtec, use it on the Vitamix, as well as use it with the Void Systems own vacuum blending solution so you guys could learn more about that because you probably haven't heard about vacuum blending until now. All right, so why am I making watermelon juice today? Well, watermelons are in season right now. I got some at the local farm the other day, and I buy them organic. This one actually happens to be from Natural Grocers. Also buy them at Sprouts Farmer's Market as well as Costco. And the amazing thing about watermelon is that they contain lots of juice. I mean, after all, the name watermelon is in the name. It's water. So it's mostly juice, actually. It's very high, 98%, 96% 
water or something like that. So it's really one of the least expensive juices you can make. And of course, when you guys vacuum juice, you're going to get the highest yield. And comparing vacuum juicing to like a $2,500 or $2,000 pure juicer or Norwalk juicer, it pretty much gets the same yield on things like the watermelon for sure. So you don't have to spend all that money. You could vacuum juice, get higher nutrition, higher yield, and more importantly, more nutrition to feed your body to help heal your body so that you could stay and prevent disease from occurring in the future. And that brings me to this episode today. So we're going to go ahead and punch out a published study here. I got it here, but we'll pop it up on the screen for you guys so you guys can follow along. And I'm just going to read a few uh, parts of it. It says, Lycopene, chemistry, biosynthesis, metabolism, and degradation under various abiotic parameters. That's a catchy big title, but basically what they're saying is they're going to share with us in this study what degrades the lycopene. And, you know, the lycopene, guys, is one of the main reasons why watermelon is beneficial. People think, oh, lycopene, it's high in tomatoes. But what you guys don't know is that fresh watermelon can contain more lycopene than fresh tomatoes. Yes, I'll throw it up here. From this study, there's a little chart here, and you guys can see of all the fresh fruits and vegetables on the list, the watermelon actually has more lycopene than even the tomatoes, and unless you get down to tomato products, which are like tomato paste. If you get double concentrated tomato paste, it's pretty high. Or if you get like sun-dried tomatoes, it's high. Or if you get like tomato powder, it's also really high. You know, so here's the thing. Lycopene is great, and let's go ahead and read the abstract. It says, lycopene, the predominant carotenoid in tomatoes, is among the major carotenoids in serum and tissues of humans. That means we absorb it and it goes into our blood and into our skin and other tissues. It says, epidemiological studies have proven the bioactive role and potential disease prevention property of carotenoids and their consumption has been associated with reduced risk of degenerated diseases. So it's very important. Actually, there's several published studies on the benefits of lycopene and shrinking your prostate this, is, this could be very important if you're an older gentleman out there that has an enlarged prostate or you want to you know, not have things like prostate cancer that could be problematic for many men. Moving down, it says introduction. Lycopene is a natural carotenoid that imparts red color to various fruits and vegetables such as tomatoes, rosehip, watermelon, and pink grapefruit. All right, so I'm not going to read much more of this study, but I want to drop down to a really important part of the study. They go over how heat and oxygen and how dehydration all affect the lycopene content, you know, once uh, it is uh, processed, okay? So we're going to go to the oxygen part. We'll throw this up on the screen for you. And it says, as discussed earlier, heat, light, and oxygen are the three potent factors leads to the degradation of carotenoids and loss of their biological activity, which is very important from health point of view. So here's the thing, right? The plants make these phytochemicals, which we call phytonutrients, and when we ingest them and eat them, they have biologic activity and health promoting effects within us. That's one of the reasons why everybody says eat fruits and vegetables. It's because all these plant phytonutrients, right? At the same time, depending on how you process your plants before you get them into you, can significantly degrade the plant phytonutrients. Consequently, as they said, reduce the biological activity and their potency so you're not going to get the healing benefits that you may be expecting, right? So, I mean, of course, if you instead of juicing watermelon, whether you're using a high-speed juicer or a high-speed blender, or any juicer for that matter, it'd be far better just cut the watermelon open and eat it. That way, you're not going to oxidize a lycopene under, you know, high oxygen or, you know, under, under all these different conditions. And, of course, you're not going to store it. You're going to open the watermelon, eat it all. So maybe you buy personal watermelons instead of those super gigantic ones you got to cut into pieces and you eat half today, put the other half in the fridge. Once again, it's oxidizing, being exposed to light and air, and then will oxidize and lower the lycopene. So let's go ahead and continue on. According to Sharma and Lee Magwer, 1996, vacuum and dark storage combination gave the lowest lycopene loss in tomato pulp. So they tested tomato pulp, but I would surmise that watermelon pulp or watermelon juice is similar, right? Things will degrade the lycopene light, the heat, and of course, the oxygen are the primary factors. As a matter of fact, these will degrade many different 
carotenoids and that's why I love vacuum blending because you're literally eliminating 80 to 85 percent of the oxygen in the carafe before you break open cell walls so you're not going to do that oxidative damage to significantly lower the lycopene why is this important if we go down on the study lycopene destabilization was three times higher in the presence of oxygen than under inert conditions so that means lycopene degrades really quickly three times faster when there's oxygen present than when it's inert right so very important we want to exclude as much oxygen as possible during the processing right and then also more importantly if you are going to make more watermelon juice than you could drink or your family could drink at once if you store it right you want to store it properly so you don't degrade the lycopene and other viable oxygen sensitive phytonutrients during storage and I'm going to show you guys that in this video and nobody else online you know shows you this because I was like the first guy to show you guys about vacuum storing your juices after you make them everybody will buy a bulk juicer which could be great they make tons of juice they just put it in jars and put a lid on it <laughs> man that juices degrade really quickly and in many cases they make way more juice than they could drink in the next day or two which it is still degrading but if you use my storage techniques there's gonna be very little degradation to the juice so you guys can have the maximum health punch the maximum health benefit and literally that is why I got into juicing I almost lost my life when I was younger so I take this matter very seriously I look up published studies in my free time for fun <laughs> I don't know some of you guys are thinking I'm crazy but that's all right because you could learn from this you don't need to read the studies that I have linked down below you guys could just watch my videos and implement what I'm showing you guys to take your health to the next level take your food processing to the next level so you could preserve more of these valuable plant phytochemicals that are in there for the plants benefit but then when we consume them they're for our benefit as well all right so today we're not just processing the watermelon watermelon alone would be great but i want to kick it up like at least 10 notches by adding another very nutritious antioxidant uh polyphenol rich flavonoid rich food which is right here in the jar you guys may not know what this is <laughs> those of you guys that have a garden you might know you can see these are little flowers no these are not cannabis flowers I know what you guys are thinking but no if you look at these these are more telling this kind of looks like what it looks like if you guys can see you guys see what that is basically these are basil flowers this is off a of Thai basil this is off like an Italian basil I probably got some lemon basil flowers some holy basil flowers in there but yeah, use the flower bud. So, you know, when I grow basil in my garden every summer, actually this year I have three beds of basil. I love basil. It grows great in the heat. And then it, it starts to go to flower. And you could eat these flowers, but they're very tough and fibrous and not too delicious. So I like to juice them to get the benefits of the basil into me. And we're going to throw up another study just right up on the screen here that I've gone over before, where I go over my gardening channel, link down below, the best way to use when you deadhead your basil or even mints or other you know plants and you're not going to use the flowers and of course they are edible is to juice them is to vacuum juice them or vacuum blend them up right and as you guys can see from this published study this table here you can see the antioxidant content of the corolla and flowers of the basil are at least two times higher than the leaves meanwhile everybody and their brother and mother are harvesting basil for leaves how many people do you know that actually eat the flowers well when the flower buds are really immature and young I like to just eat them and put them in salads and soups and other things fresh and raw but when they get a little more fibrous right like like this right they're really not that good to eat so now I want to basically extract the most nutrition right and because these are very high antioxidant I want to preserve the antioxidant activity and think about it think about this guys those of you guys that are smart will understand this <laughs> when you blend this in the blender and every time the blender blade goes around you make a whirlwind like right it looks like a, a, a funnel cloud or a tornado in the middle of your blender if you if you don't if you've never seen this before put water in your blender plain with nothing added and turn your blender on you'll see a little funnel in the middle of it, it looks like a tornado right as you are blowing open cell walls you're literally bombarding the cells with oxygen so you're super oxygenating it and then guess what what do the antioxidants do right it's antioxidants so it's 
antioxidation. So the antioxidants are going to be used up by all the oxygen that you're putting in there. So then when you consume it, there's going to be less of these antioxidants for you to benefit from, right? Published studies have shown two to three times less of the oxygen sensitive vitamins and phytochemicals when you do traditional blending over vacuum blending. Of course, a high speed juicer, they are also not the best like the Breville juicer, high speed machine, they inject a lot of oxygen into your juice. So if you do want to use a juicer instead of a vacuum blender, which excludes the most oxygen of any appliance that I've found to date out there, you want to use a low RPM juicer, the best of which it, they run at like 40 revolutions per minute. So that would introduce a lot less oxygen than say a 1725 RPM champion juicer or even like a 125 RPM twin gear juicer. All right. So we're going to vacuum juices and then take to take it up another notch. We're going to go ahead and I've uh, basically already peeled a lime. So we're going to add a little bit of lime juice in there, which is going to bring the acidity down, which is also going to help out to preserve some of the more valuable phytochemicals in the juice that we're making today. And that's pretty much the recipe. We're going to use half a watermelon, half the basil, half a lime, put it in a blender craft. We're going to put this craft under vacuum to remove the excess oxygen. Uh, 80 to 85 percent is my estimation then we're going to grind it all up process it then we're going to squeeze it through alexa's bag and then i'm going to share with you guys how to store it properly all right all right so before we get started what i want to do for you guys first is i want to let you guys know about the avoid systems kit for the blend tech or vitamix if you guys want to purchase this kit you guys can save $25 off by using coupon code dj25 at void system Dot com that'll save you guys $25 off the lid alone that fits the blend tech the lid plus the craft and other accessories so you could convert your classic Vitamix over to a vacuum blender or $25 off the void systems vacuum blending solution of course when you guys use that coupon code not only will you save $25 but void systems will share me a small commission so I could continue to make these educational videos so I could use my time to research published studies to share these with you so that you guys can have the best knowledge to process your fruits and vegetables in the best way. So if I've helped you out with some information or helped you decide upon the right juicer or the right vacuum blender, hey, please use my coupon code to reward me just a little bit so I can continue my mission to educate the world about the power of fruits and vegetables. It is much appreciated. And of course, if you guys want to get the world's best nut milk or juice bags i've tested a lot of them trust me this is alexa's bags you can find them at alexasbags.com no coupon code is necessary to get the lowest price and shipping is included inside the united states for alexa's bag one year warranty and these are the easiest to clean that i ever found so i love them a lot all right so on on with the show what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and load up this carafe I um, mean, you know, I always like to put the watery ingredients in first. So first, we're going to go ahead and cut this watermelon in half. All right, let's see what we got. All right, there we go. Now, today we have a seedless watermelon. I would encourage you guys to juice seeded watermelon whenever possible. The seeded watermelons are actually going to be more nutritious. Now, why are they more nutritious? They just have seeds. Well, because when you're juicing them with a the vacuum blender, you're going to grind up the seeds and you're going to release some of the seed oils and some of the essential fats and some of the minerals that are contained within the seed. And when you guys buy a seedless watermelon, you're cheating yourself out of nutrients, actually. You could buy online, you know, sometimes it's hard to find in the stores. You could buy actually uh, peeled watermelon seeds that are sprouted. They are so delicious. I think they're high in zinc and high in minerals. They're just one of my favorites. But yeah, buy seeded watermelon <laughs> to juice them. You're going to have a more nutritious juice. And actually, the the small amounts of fat are going to actually help increase the amount of lycopene and probably also increase the preservation uh, of the lycopene as well when you store it. So, you know, while you could actually also put the rind of the watermelon in the vacuum blender to process to get the juice out of the rind and you could put the rind in a juicer. Um, you know, this was grown in Mexico, although it is organic. I'm not going to trust things from Mexico. So today we're just going to go ahead and cut off the outer rind. But I'm going to go ahead and leave as much white part underneath the rind because that's also full of nutrients. Now, when you, of course, juice the rind, you're going to have more of the chlorophyll in your juice. That being said, it'll also dilute the color of the juice. 
so it won't look quite as pretty or as red. That being said, I'm processing with basil today, so that's the deal's over on the color anyways, because it's going to make it all kind of like a purplish color that maybe doesn't look quite as appealing as a nice vibrant red color. All right, so as you guys can see, we got that watermelon peeled. We're going to go ahead and move this other half over the other side. And what we're going to do now is just uh, cut into this. And I just like to cut it into little bits. This way, it's going to juice a lot better. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and load up the blender. So I'm going to use the side pieces first and kind of drop them in the blender to make sure we have a lot of the smaller pieces. And we're going to go ahead and drop in some of these ones from the middle. Then we're going to tap our craft down. Try to fill all the void, fill all the space in there. Got a few watermelon left. We're gonna go ahead and take our lime and then chop that in half and drop half of the lime in there as well. And now we're gonna probably take about half of this basil that has been washed and dried out of this bowl here. You could put this in whole, but I do like to pre-cut it. That'll help it uh, to get it to blend up a little bit easier. It looks like this top half has a lot more of the purple uh, basil. I have purple opal basil as well as the Thai basil. Uh, the Thai basil actually tastes like licorice. So this is going to be like a licorice watermelon juice. And here's the thing. If you guys don't have basil flowers like I'm juicing today, don't worry about it. You guys could just use basil leaves. Um, if you don't like basil leaves, you could go ahead and buy some mint leaves or use mint flowers out of your garden. Um, and if you don't have any of those and you don't want to change the color of their vibrant red watermelon juice, go ahead and use some ginger because that'll actually add a nice kick, add some antioxidants, add some good nutrition, add some good flavor, but not change the color of your juice all so much, all right? So we go ahead and chop this up into little pieces, and now we're just going to go ahead and drop this on the top. All right, it looks like we might have some extra room, so we're just going to go ahead and put another layer of watermelon in there. Maybe a few more pieces along the side here. And of course, the sweetest part of the watermelon is right on the middle on the inside, so we're going to go ahead and taste test this watermelon. Man, they don't make watermelons like they used to when I was a kid. Things barely sweet at all, man. I encourage you guys to buy locally grown watermelons from your local farmer's market. Uh, generally, they're sweeter than ones that have been imported or shipped from afar. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and pull a vacuum on this craft. So the most important thing is to make sure there's nothing that's gonna impede the seal of the void system's uh, lid. And then the other thing is, as we put the lid on, I like to lift up this little vent tab. It'll help push this down a lot easier. You then wanna take a look at the seal on all four sides to make sure there's no you know, pieces of basil or anything else that's gonna impede the seal because then you're not gonna make a good seal and the vacuum blender won't work. The next step is we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. It says void, then it says zero, and we're just gonna go ahead and hit the go button. And I'm, you guys could hear that. Basically we got dual pumps coming on right now and you guys can see the number right there is incrementing rather quickly actually. Unlike most vacuum pumps on vacuum blenders, the void system lid has dual pumps, so this will vacuum uh, you know, twice as quickly as other vacuum pumps out there to achieve even a higher vacuum. I mean, this is the high pressure lid, not yet available. I will have a video when it is available and actually check it out. It's already done vacuuming, and that's really how easy vacuum blending is, guys. You get the right lid. You suck this, you suck the oxygen out. If you guys could look at this, I don't know if you guys could see this, but it's actually concave, so it was flat. Because there's so much vacuum on it, it's like sucking your lips in. Like that. It's literally sucked in. It's a sucked in look. I like that look on a blender craft. Now the other thing that this vacuum blender does that other vacuum blenders don't do is that it should the vacuum get go down because of leaks or whatever else, this will the vacuum pump will continue to kick on and keep the vacuum stationary at the preset, which could be anywhere from 16 to 20, depending on your elevation and the specific vacuum blender lid you buy. The other thing is when you're blending, as soon as you start blending, some oxygen will be released, literally that's trapped inside the food. And because this continually comes on during the blending process, it's gonna immediately evacuate that oxygen to keep you at the 80 to 85% oxygen removal rate uh, you know, to keep more nutrition in your blended smoothies, your bl vacuum blended juices, your vacuum blended sauces, or whatever else. The other thing that you're going to get when you vacuum blend, because you are excluding the air, you're not going to dissolve all the oxygen. So you're not going to literally inflate your mixture with oxygen 
by adding dissolved oxygen, link down below to my video, the two things Vitamix doesn't want you to know where I actually share how much oxygen is put in when you're not vacuum blending. Um, in addition, the flavors are going to be a lot stronger uh, when you vacuum blend because you're not oxidizing off all the flavonoids and polyphenols in there that give the, give the food the flavor. So, you know, you could use half as much basil as you normally would to get the similar result. Um, actually, one lady returned the vacuum blender to me one time, and I'm like, why are you returning? She's like, everything tastes stronger in it. I don't like it. And I'm like, all right. Most people think that's a benefit, but if you want to return it because you think it's it's a detriment, go right ahead, you know? So I got a good story about, out of that, too. In addition, it also doesn't separate as quickly. Also, it stores much better because you're not dissolving the oxygen. That dissolved oxygen that is inside the blended mixture oxidizes the nutrients in the mixture as soon as you're done blending. So maybe if you drink it immediately, you're still gonna have higher levels of oxidative damage that occurred during the blend, but it's not gonna be as bad as if you let that mixture sit for a couple, three hours. You've all made that banana smoothie that you drank immediately, it tasted good. You let it sit a couple, three hours, you drink it again, it, it tastes off, it tastes horrible, it, it tastes like it's gone bad, but you drink it anyway, I've done that so many times. That's because you're tasting the oxidative damage, right? Anyways, once this is up to vacuum, all you literally have to do is blend this up. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the blender on and I'm just gonna probably do a quick pulse and then we're just gonna give it a solid blend, probably for no more than 30 seconds. We blended for just about 30 seconds there. We have a nice homogeneous mixture. As you guys can see, the void vacuum blender is still pumping, removing the excess oxygen just like it should. When you're done, you could go ahead and press the off button and it'll stop running. And then you're gonna lift up this little red tab. So I want you guys to listen as I lift up this little tab and I want you guys to look at the level of the mixture. You guys could hear all the air rush back in because we had removed the air. And I know some of you guys are thinking, John, you remove the air when you blend, but now you let the air back in. What's the use of vacuum blending? <laughs> Here's the thing. The use of vacuum blending is not the air that's going back in right now that is only touching the top of the mixture. The issue is if you're blending with, with the air, you're blending oxygen into the mixture. So right now, this is literally an 80% oxygen deprived or 85% oxygen deprived mixture because we didn't mix all the oxygen in, and it stays that way, especially if you vacuum store it, like I'll show you guys in a second. So this is literally has significantly less oxygen dissolved in your mixture. And if you guys are into wine or beer, you know to preserve wine or beer, they deoxygenate it before they bottle it, before they put it in a can, so it doesn't oxidize and go bad in the can so it stores longer. This is what I'm doing with juicing for you guys, so you guys can do it at home with some very simple equipment, such as the Void Systems lid and some inexpensive vacuum pumps, all right? So we're gonna go ahead, lift up this little tab here. At the same time we lift up the tab, we basically just uh, push my thumb up on this and just lift it off, right? You guys can see we got a little bit of uh, mixture on the lid, so I like to take the Blendtec spatula, my favorite spatula for blenders. I don't even know if these are still available. I'm glad I got a couple of them. And we just spatula this off. This is super simple, super easy to clean. Just rinse this off. When you're done, uh, should you get things inside the pump, that's all right. You just turn it on and run the pump while you're running it underwater. It'll pump water through the pump. It's been designed to do that, so don't worry about it. And then once you have your homogenous mixture here, you're gonna go ahead and then take an Anchor Hawking two quart mixing uh, bowl. Uh, this is available at Walmart and Target for under $20. You're going to take your Alexa's bag, this oversized bag. I love it because it is so large. makes this process much easier. You literally could take this bag and put it over the whole entire two-quart Anchor Hawking mixing jar, just like that. And then you just pour this whole mixture in there. Then you take the spatula and you spatula out the rest. I really love the shape of the blend tech craft. It's intelligently designed, except for the small flutes they had to put in there to avoid uh, trademark or patent <laughs> something. All right, so yeah, look at that. We got that all entirely clean now. Next step is you go ahead and then lift the 
edge of this bag up. And look at this. All we can do is lift it up, and look at that. It's juicing on its own. We don't even have to do nothing. It's already dripping all the juice out. All right. So you could sit here and wait like a whole bunch of time, and it's probably going to drip out a lot, but you still at some point will need to exert some pressure on it to get the rest out. But as you guys can see, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on it. As you guys can see, the juice is literally dripping out super simple, super easily. This does not take rocket science. This doesn't take a 2,000 pound hydraulic press. This, however, does take a little bit of strength in your fingers and your muscles. You're gonna get some, uh, build up some dexterity in your fingers and your joints, which I think is good. This is not hard work. This is not like lifting 50 pounds of weight or anything. It's kind of relaxing and fun, just kind of slowly squeeze this out. Um, especially when you're squeezing out the pulp from things like fruits and leafy greens. It's super simple and even things like stem vegetables like celery. Although if you are pressing out things like root vegetables that have a lot more mass, it does take a bit more strength and that's going to definitely build up more muscles for you doing it like that. So as you guys can see, this is very quick and efficient. I'm almost done squeezing all the juice out of the blended mixture, which at this point is uh, mostly just the fiber from the basil and a little bit of the watermelon fiber. So we're getting down the end and I just like to do this uh, ring out technique, where I basically ring it onto each other and just seriously ring it. All right, I got that like 98% dry or even more. And then I shake this down. And we get one big pulp mass, and I want to show you guys what this looks like. And yes, I mean, you guys could buy a $500 hydraulic press and jack it up and deal with cleaning the press, cleaning that stupid press bag. Or you could buy a $2,000 hydraulic press that works automatically. You know, your pulp will get a little bit drier. You might make an extra ounce of juice, but it's just not worth all the extra work and hassle. Because I could take this pulp, it looks like Play-Doh at this point. I could squeeze it, no juice squeezes out. It's like Play-Doh, it's a solid mass. This stuff is really dry, guys, no joke, and it's mostly the basal fibers at this point. The other thing I will say is that the Alexis bag has the ideal, perfect hole size or porosity. You could kind of see through there, and if you take up a press bag or press cloth from a hydraulic press or manual jack press and you look through it, you can't see through it. That's because the pore size is a lot smaller and it doesn't let all the polyphenols and phytonutrients through the cloth. In my personal opinion, it does give you, however, a really clean juice. This is a really clean juice with, you know, a little less clean. <laughs> but, you know, in my opinion, those pressed cloth that have a, a fine weave give you more of a watery juice and you're leaving behind nutrients. Whereas this this cloth is optimized to give you the most nutrients as well as the most juice. So it is absolutely my favorite. Looks like we made approximately five cups in here. All right, now what I'm going to do for you guys is actually taste test the juice here. So we're going to go ahead and taste test. And look at this. I mean, this is not the prettiest color, guys, because if we got the purple from the Thai basil and the opal basil and the green from the basil, and then it's diluted with the red. This is almost be the color if you basically uh, use the rind in the watermelon. And then, of course, it would be more nutritious, but does not look as good. If you guys want to get this color back in there, maybe put a couple, like a half a beat in there. That'll kind of get it to be more like deeper reddish color. All right, trying the basil lime watermelon juice. Mmm. I personally love that juice. I'm tasting some like the tannins in there from the basil. Like it's a little bit hardcore. I mean, a lot of you guys probably would not want to use this much basil. This is the, how much basil I use every single time I juice watermelon because it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm really making watermelon juice to get rid of my basil flowers because like it's the best way I could get those nutrients into me. But for those of you guys that are just doing it for fun, just put in a couple sprigs of basil or, you know, sprigs of, uh, you know, mint or just a little bunch from the store because <laughs> this is going to be overpowering for a lot of you guys because this is not a sweet juice by any stretch of the imagination. This juice has been designed for the phytonutrients, for the health benefits of the basil and for the lycopene of the watermelon. And of course, I taste that hint of lime in there. 
I like it, but definitely not a sweet watermelon juice like you might buy at the store when they add extra sugar, all right? All right, so the final thing I want to show you guys in this episode today is how to store your watermelon juice. So, all right, let's review. We basically vacuum blended our watermelon with our basil. So we evacuated 80 to 85% of the oxygen. We then let the oxygen back in that touched only the top part. As soon as we let it in, it's still, you know, low dissolved oxygen at that point. We then put it in the bag. We squeezed it out. Yes, when we squeeze it out, maybe some oxygen gets in there due to the squeezing process. But it's still less oxygen in this juice than any other juicer in the world that I'm aware of that you could use at home. Next step. When you guys store your juice, you don't want to just pour this in a jar and a glass and then put a lid on it because now you're going to have a headspace of the oxygen. Also, any oxygen that it is in there can react now because it's in an oxygen-rich environment. So we still want to keep it in an oxygen-deprived environment. So to do that, we're going to use a mason jar, right? And, you know, as I said earlier in that published study, right? If you use a clear mason jar and then you keep this out in the light, that'll also degrade your lycopene. So better than a clear mason jar, which honestly I store in my fridge and unless I open the door of the fridge, the light comes on, the fridge is always dark. <laughs> so I, I will give you that. But what you could do instead is you could get these cool amber mason jars that don't let the light in. And if you're super hardcore, right, and have lots of money, you could buy the Vio Live. uh, basically jars that are like like literally black like they're bluish black they don't let any light in right but those are super expensive and they, i don't think they come in standard mason jar sizes anyways this is the best you guys could find i think i bought these at walmart a while back i don't even know if they still sell them but uh yeah so this excludes the light but we're still going to have the issue with the oxygen so first we're going to go ahead and uh, load this up we're only going to load it up to 900 milliliters because you want to leave a little bit of head space And then what you're going to do next is you're going to go ahead and then use the vacuum lid. This is very important. This is a vacuum, one-way vacuum valve in here. We're going to go ahead and put that lid on. And now we're going to go ahead and use a vacuum pump. And now what we're going to do is we're going to suck the excess oxygen out of the headspace. But also, more importantly, this pump pulls more vacuum than even the almighty Void Systems lid does. So now we're basically removing... The dissolved oxygen that may have been put in during the blending process and may have been put in during the squeezing process with this pump because it definitely takes some strength to pull it and while you guys could get an electric vacuum pump those electric vacuum pumps pull maybe 15 inches of mercury this pulls like maybe 25 inches of mercury and so it removes a lot more oxygen so you know i'd say that build your muscles if you want it most oxygen removal for the most storage and the best storage so when i store in this way and then the other important thing is keep this cold it goes in my fridge that's set between uh, 33 to 35 degrees um i can store this for up to a week without any issues all right so that's <laughs> oxygen voided out <laughs> all right so there you go that's been basically sealed in an amber mason jar with the oxygen removed because you couldn't see the process i'm going to use a standard mason jar and i want to show you guys this as well we don't have a lot of juice left but we're going to go ahead and throw that in there and we got the smaller narrow mouth mason jar lids with the valve i do recommend the large valves with the large lids i like those a lot better because it's also easier to clean the jars but now we're going to go ahead and suck the oxygen out of this all right, so in some cases, you may be able to see the dissolve, the oxygen bubbles actually come up and out of the juice because you're literally pulling some of the dissolved oxygen out of the juice. The stronger vacuum pump you use, the more dissolved oxygen you'll be removing from the juice. Once again, I estimate between 80 to 85% of the dissolved oxygen can be removed, so you're just storing it in an oxygen-deprived environment. Once again, keep it cold, keep it cold. All right. So there you guys have it. You guys learned today how to make the best and most nutritious, highest yield watermelon juice using the Blendtec blender with a Void Systems lid also available for the Vitamix. But basically you guys want to do the vacuum blending of the food.
that you then want to use the Alexa's bag to press it out. And then if you're not drinking it immediately, you then want to use a vacuum sealing kit to vacuum store it. So now you could preserve the most amount of polyphenols and other oxygen sensitive nutrients that are normally being lost through traditional blending where you mix in lots of air or even high speed juicing that run in a high speed that don't necessarily heat your juice. However, they do oxygenate your juice significantly to lower the oxygen sensitive phytonutrients. So if you guys are interested in buying the Void Systems lid for your Blendtec or the kit for the Vitamix or the Void Systems blender, if you don't already own a Blendtec or Vitamix, you can use the coupon code DJ25 at void-system.com for $25 off any of those three different items. Also, of course, besides saving $25, Void Systems will share a small commission with me so I continue to make my videos because hopefully you have found them helpful. Also, of course, if you guys want to buy the Alexa's bags, you guys can buy the Alexa's bag that comes as a two pack at alexasbags.com. Link down below this video. No coupon code is required to get the lowest price on Alexa's bags with free shipping inside the United States. They will also ship overseas for an additional cost because I don't even know if you could get these anything like this overseas because they are welded here in the United States with a full one year warranty. And of course, when you make a purchase at Alexa's bags, they will share with me a small commission so I can continue to make my educational videos and bring you guys some of the science, couple the long ways, some of the best equipment so you guys can maximize your phytonutrient intake and thereby maximizing your health benefits and maximizing your body's healing ability because it's the nutrients in plants I am convinced that help our bodies work more effectively to heal and prevent disease, as proven by a lot of the scientific studies that I've read. So in any case, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also, more importantly, share this with other people that rave about making watermelon juice and they're just using a traditional blender or they're using a high-speed juicer. Share with them how they can make the most nutritious watermelon juice with the most phytochemicals the least amount of dissolved oxygen that's going to also store the longest without any pasteurization. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new upcoming episodes. I've come out every five to seven days. You never know what new juicer I'll be unboxing or vacuum blender I'll be sharing or a juicer comparison I'll be doing or what new juicing knowledge bombs or, or what other equipment I'll be sharing with you guys so you guys can process your plant foods in the best ways possible to maximize your nutrition benefit. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to share past episodes of past episodes or Wealth and Knowledge. Over 800 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to you guys all about the best equipment to process your fruits and vegetables and other plant foods in the best ways possible. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.